and welcome everyone to our virtual Bible study. So happy to have you with us. We're going to have a great time together. Really excited about our praise and worship, our prayer time, and also, get this, a message from the Word of the Lord, I believe that will be specifically right on time. Lots of scriptures. Remember, when you have a lot of Word in your life, you have a lot of power in your life. So I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to have a great time together. Faith City Family Church is bringing to you this one hour virtual Bible study. Well, the time will vary sometimes. Sometimes it's under an hour. It's how the Lord leads. But I know that we're going to have an amazing time together. I feel it in my spirit. Sister Kaisha Blackstone is here to lead us in worship that we can just kind of focus on praise and thanking God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. Part of this experience is also praying for one another. And our theme the theme for this month is trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, when you give your prayer request to God, you really are demonstrating, you are putting action on faith, saying, I believe if I have enough faith to share my prayer request, and I put it out there, the people of God agree together with me that something great absolutely is going to happen. I hope you'll do that. So if you'd like to share your prayer request on Facebook, or YouTube, would you do it on Facebook? Send message or comment section. Uh, YouTube, the chat section. And our prayer team is always seven days a week. We're always looking at the prayer requests that are coming in and we will pray. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another wonderful Wednesday of virtual Bible study where we get to in the center of the week or whenever somebody may see this to be able to have praise, to have worship, to have prayer together and break the bread of life so that we can continue on this amazing journey with Jesus. We pray for a powerful time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And I want to welcome Kaisha Blackstone and the Praise Ministry. Let's have a great time together on the Wednesday virtual Hour of Power. Praise the Lord, everyone. How many of you know that God is alive tonight? God is alive. He's alive.
he's in control. Oh, I love that song and so many good lyrics in that song. One of my favorite is though, I know he's in control. And a lot of times that I say that, I have to say that by faith because I really don't know uh, what is going to be the outcome other than my faith in Almighty God. If you could help me a little bit more here, I'd be grateful to you. And you know what? While Kaisha and Brother Dana were singing that, I was just like having a vision that there were all these folks. I mean to tell you, you were just singing, you were waving your hand. I don't know, maybe in the car, at home, wherever you're at. Maybe it's a little bit of a break at work and you were watching it. But I want to remind you, you keep on praising God. You keep on trusting God because God is absolutely 100% able to do it and to turn it around in your life. We're going to get ready in just a moment to pray over all of the requests that we have thus far. But what I want to do is this. In, in, our, in our video ministry, I want to see if it's possible in our PowerPoint ministry. On my way out here on the platform, I felt the Lord lay this on my heart. And what I'm holding in my hand is a miracle prayer cloth. A miracle prayer cloth. And the Bible said in the book of Acts, it said that the Apostle Paul sent handkerchiefs and aprons to the people. Now, I know the thing up on your screen, which is great. I'm thankful they could pull, pull that because a lot of times you'll hear me not only at Faith City, but on Reach Gospel Radio. I'm the founder of the Reach Gospel Radio Network. And the Lord put on my heart, he said, people need prayer calls and they need them right now. So if you would like a prayer cloth, I want to incur use that email address. I'll tell our staff to be looking for that. Email your address to prayer night at reachgospelradio.com. It's the sign for this specifically. And we want to get to you a miracle prayer cloth. You can put it under your pillow. You can send it to somebody in the mail who has a card or whatever. And I just believe that God is going to honor this step of faith. Now, I'm going to leave that up another second for you so you can make note of that email. It's an easy email address, prayer night at reachgospelradio.com. And we will get that in the mail to you right away. I'm going to ask Brother Harmon, if he would at this time, uh, to bring uh, any prayer requests that we have that have accumulated that we can pray for. After we pray for them, then we're going to pray for you. We're going to ask that God would touch you from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet because we know and we believe that God is absolutely 100% able. Now, this past Sunday, there was a word that somebody put forth. My goodness, if you, if you were here this past Sunday at the 11 a.m. service, we had a special visitation of the Holy Spirit. It was just like, it was like manna from heaven. And we ended up going into overtime the prayer line was literally all the way, half the way around the church. Brother Harmon, we prayed for people for about 15 minutes in Kaisha. They were lined up and, and no one left. I, I noticed it was such a heavy move of God. The line went from the center here all the way around. And I said, I'm going to touch every one of you with oil briefly. And we touched every single one of them. And here's the word that came forth while we were doing that. It says, I alone have the repair manual and I'm fixing it right now says the Lord of hosts can I read that again I alone have the repair manual God says and I'm fixing it right now says the Lord of hosts what a word of encouragement this God is saying I know how to fix it I know how to heal it I know how to remedy it I know how to work it for your favor we're going to be praying for that in just a moment brother Harmon thank you for these requests God bless you uh, uh, Michelle says that I want to decree and declare that I know I'm going to make it because we serve a mighty God and he is always with us amen a uh, Stephanie please pray for me I have cancer she says and is due to have multiple surgeries. God bless you, my Lord. Natasha, please keep my mom in prayer. She has to have surgery concerning breast cancer. 
and I have to have surgery as well in the near future. So many needs. Candy, I have been put, I have been at my house, it says, for nine years, but my house sold, and my rent is being increased. I need help. I need affordable housing. Candy, in the name of Jesus, God is going to work that out. Lisa, pray that God gives me strength and that my children get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Absolutely, we believe God for that. He could do. Pray for my uncle and his family that need healing. A sister folk, pray for my sister. A serious surgery is scheduled for her in the near future. This says, this is from Dover, Delaware. Pray for Sandy and the family. This is from a dash, dashis. It says, can you pray for Dashan and his family? Thank you. Sherelle says, pray for Tawana. Pray for Tashe and the family as well. A couple more here. A sister Robin, thanks for all the prayers. I'm giving thanks. I would like to ask for prayer for my granddaughter and uh, that is to be born on May. Well, wait a minute. My granddaughter came forth on the 14th and she was absolutely healthy. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I hope that encourages somebody that God answers prayer of the grandmother. Prayer for healing and uh, that my ch children's ways will change and they will come to know God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're going to get ready to pray. Brother Harmon is going to come with the anointing oil. And I, I'm going to ask you, for the, one of the greatest ways to get a blessing is to help somebody else to get a blessing. I feel the power of God right now. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask Sister Kaisha if she doesn't mind joining us because the Bible said if just two or three would gather in prayer that it would be done. Amen. And so, Sister Kaisha, Brother Charlie, we're going to lay all three of us our hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, during this virtual Bible study, we anoint with oil in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Every single request right now, we take authority over the devil in Jesus' name. He's come but to kill, steal, and destroy. We pray for the healing of the breast cancer. We pray for the healing of the sick body. For the, for the mind that is all stressed out, for the family that is lost. Oh God, we pray for these miracles in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying that the, the dear sister, her, her, she said, I'm anonymous, but my children need to get their ways changed. God, we pray for a household revival. Lord, I believe there's many families need that right now. Lord, they're crying over the children, the grandkids. And Lord, that's a good thing. Parents and grandparents need to hold on to God on changing hand. And if we'll keep praying, our children shall come to Christ. Father, we are believing for these miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. And now, Brother Harmon, Sister Kaisha, and myself, we stretch our hands out to you. We, we look into these cameras, and the Bible said if two or three would agree that they would ask, and it would be done. Now, we're praying for you right now. The Lord will heal you from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet. Right now, we got right now faith. I mean that God can do it right now. We're asking him to do it right now. You don't have to wait a week. You don't have to wait a month. But right now that the Lord is delivering and saving and setting free in the name of Jesus. Somebody watching, we're praying for you. You need a job. And you need it now. You need it right now. You've been waiting weeks and and it's not been a good situation. But we're praying in Jesus' name that God will open up that door that no man can shut and you will get the better job of the other one that you thought you were going to get. You've been interviewing for multiple positions. I believe I was supposed to say this, but God said, I'm going to give you the best of all of them. In Jesus' name, I pray for families to be saved. I pray for the young people and the grandchildren and all of them just to get their minds right, to get out of relationships that are hindering them in the name of Jesus. And I also pray for the financial blessing to come on you. I pray that God will give you not just enough, but more than enough, because he's El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. And now I want to invite somebody. We want to invite somebody 
to receive Christ as Savior. The Bible said if you call on the name of Jesus, he'll save you. Now, friend, I believe it's a wonderful thing. And I invite you, if you don't have a church, you can come here to church. We've been open since the pandemic, and now more people are coming out. But let me tell you, just going to church will not save you. Some preachers wouldn't tell you that because they're trying to get you in the building. I'm trying to get you to heaven first. So if you want salvation, if you'll pray this prayer with us, maybe Sister Kaisha will repeat it on her microphone with me and Brother Harmon as well. If you'll pray it, doesn't matter how many bad things you've done. You say, I've done a whole lot of bad things. But welcome to the club. Not a one of us perfect up here. But if you'll ask for forgiveness and repent, he'll save you. Are you ready? Come on, let's do it together right now. Everybody, come on, say it after me. Say, Lord, by faith I believe. Lord, by faith I believe. When you died on the cross, you, died on the cross. you did it for me. You did it for me. I confess my sins. I I ask for forgiveness. I ask, for forgiveness. I ask you to wash my sin away. I ask you to wash my Come sin into away. my life. Come into my life. Save my soul. Save my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive it by faith. I it by that faith. I am saved. That I am Amen. 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 We're gonna Amen. clap our hands right along with you because we're thankful with just only one person gets saved. The Bible said the angels in heaven they rejoice. So praise God and God bless you. I want to thank Brother Harmon. I want to thank Sister Kaisha Blackstone. I want to thank the praise ministry, the prayer ministry. I want to thank uh, Brother brother Brett on the audio. I want to thank him for doing a tremendous job. Brother BK, Brother Brian Atkins of Gifted Entertainment, Brother Al Wolfolk. I just want to say praise God, praise God for everybody. Amen. And Brother Brett, I've been praying for you today. I'm just going to say it. I feel a miracle's on the way, brother. I'm supposed to tell you that. I don't know why, but I'm going to follow what God says. God said, tell him it's on the way. Hallelujah. And it's not going to take a long time to get it. In the name of Jesus, amen. I usually don't do this, but keep on playing, Dana. I pray over you right now. You, I need prayer, and you need prayer. God, I pray over Brother Dana Saray, the music director, and his wife and his daughter, in the name of Jesus, that you cover them in the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for Brother Joshua White and the white family in the name of Jesus over their house their children I plead the blood in Jesus name and over brother DJ today who is filling in for brother Duda brother Vernell Mincy we bless you brother DJ in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Ghost because we can't make it without the Lord we bless you in Jesus name we pray amen and amen are you having a good time I feel you are I know I am what a blessing it is to come to Together for the Wednesday night virtual Bible study. Well, we're going to come to that point now where we're going to ask you, I want to take just a moment to reach out to ask you to support the work of the Lord. Yes, I want to say it as testimony. Praise God. We never closed. Somebody was telling me of a church probably about 50 miles, 40 miles, 40 to 50 miles from here. And I was surprised when I heard it that they still hadn't opened yet. The uh, reason I'm sharing that is because I'm thankful by the mercy, the grace, but I got to say this too, because of the support of the people of God that we've never shut our doors. We remained open, yes, and kept the outreach going for Christ. But I want to thank every one of you who at any time you've given. You've given tithes. You've given special offerings. You've you've showed up. Can I say thank you? We appreciate it. But I also humbly and respectfully want to say that we do need your continued support. So I pray that you will help us through the giving of your tithing and your generous offerings. We always share scriptures of encouragement. Lately, we've been starting out with Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10, about when we give our tithes and gifts to the Lord's work, we bring honor to Him, and He honors us in return. As that verse says, 
honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God takes special note when we give to support the work of the gospel. And our other final verse that we are faithful to share, I call it the covenant verse of giving that God gave all of us in the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, he which says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. God said, I'll bless you. Number one, he said, I'll bless you. Three things always happen. See, when you give to God, he'll bless you, he'll increase you, and he'll protect you. Just before we pray, may I share the ways to give. They're all safe and secure. The need is great, and we pray that you'll just follow what the good Lord leads. You can text to give if you like at 302-455-2820. You can also use the option which we refer to as Cash App. Dollar sign. Faith City FC2, lower, uppercase, doesn't matter. You can download the church's app, and I hope you will, on your Apple or Android device. You can give on that. Also, you can give at faithcitynow.com. Click Donate. And if you would like to mail, by the mail, your tithes and offerings, to mail it to the church address, we're at 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. Shall we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus? We are thankful to be in the Lord's service, all of us together. Teamwork makes God's dream work. And we pray, Lord, that everyone listening and viewing will pray about what they can do to help us continue the work of the gospel, not only inside the walls of the church, but outside the walls as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you. We love you more than words could say. I just try to do my best to sincerely express respectful appreciation and gratitude for your help. I'll be back in just a moment. respectful thank you for your support of the gospel work here at Faith City Family Church. Just before we go right into the word of the Lord, I'm excited about what we're going to share out of God's powerful word and his principles. I want to invite everyone to Sunday, May the 22nd. It's a, it's a very special day here at the church. It would be my privilege to be able to get to see you. We call it New Members Appreciation Sunday. I'd like to add on, if I may, we want to appreciate all members. We want to open up the door for 
new members to join and those that have expressed joining since the pandemic. After each service at 9 and 11, we're going to have food and fellowship. I can't wait to be able to walk around, talk to people and meet people. And I hope you'll bring your family and friends this Sunday, May the 22nd, to our new Members Appreciation, Members Appreciation Sunday and fellowship for our church family. And then the following Sunday after that is Sunday, May the 29th. And we're calling that Baby Dedication Sunday. So many of you have wanted to have your baby, your little child, consecrated, blessed, and baptized. Well, we're going to do it on that Sunday during the service at the altar of the church. We'll also be giving you a wonderful certificate that you will look at as a keepsake that your child was dedicated and baptized at the altar of Faith City Family Church. And certainly, we're remembering graduates all along the way. On Sunday, June, and uh, the 5th and the 12th and all the Sundays. We're going to call it honoring all graduates for the month of June. And I wish you, even right now or a little bit later on, would you email us a picture of yourself, your name, the name of your school? Because we want to let thousands of people know in person, online, all of our various platforms, your picture, your name, the name of the school. We want to see you represent what the Lord has done for you in your life. Email it as soon as you can. Would you do it? And I'm looking at the email address. Here it is. Let's see. Oh, I'm looking at my screen here. FaithCityConnect at gmail.com. FaithCityConnect at gmail.com. Do it right away. Picture. Let's review again. Your name, neighbor, your school. And we're going to celebrate what the Lord has done in your life. And, of course, on Sundays, the church is open, 9 and 11. Just want to give an extra push on that, always online and in your car in the church parking lot as well. I want to give a special extra thanks once again for the amazing praise ministry. Thank you, Brother Dana, Sister Kaisha, Brother Joshua, Brother DJ, thank you so very much. We give God praise. We are blessed. Excited about this Bible study for the next few minutes as we come to the Word of God. It's entitled, The Blessings of Choosing a Thankful Attitude. Blessings. Another key word, choosing. Attitudes are always chosen just like beliefs are chosen. You and I, we're not born with good attitudes. We're not born with certain beliefs. All of these things during the life experience are matters of choice. Of course, we have outside influences along our journey of life. But at the end of the day, the Bible is encouraging us to choose and develop a thankful attitude because when you choose to develop a thankful attitude, the Bible said that three important things always happen to you. Now, I need this Bible study. I can't speak for you, but I need it. And I hope you won't think less of me, but sometimes I have been caught complaining. Oh, I can't believe I admitted that. Sometimes I have been caught getting impatient. Oh, yes, never you, only me. But we all are living in this human tabernacle of flesh. And we all need exhortation and encouragement so that our light can shine, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. So when you choose to develop a thankful attitude, three important things always happen to you. The first one is this. It helps you to refocus your perspective when you choose to be thankful. When you take a step back, and even though something may be hurtful happened, there was a great loss. Something really was tough in your season. When you say, no, uh-uh, I know this isn't pleasant, this isn't positive, 
But I know that at the end, God always brings me through. And I'm able to say, because I've cho chosen to be thankful, I'm able to say the words of Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. I'm, I'm able to choose these words over other words of negativity. And these words are, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I'll never forget my nephew when my aunt passed years ago. He stood there at the service and there at the casket. I'll never forget my, uh, no, it was my cousin, Billy. He was from uh, Richmond, Virginia. I'll never forget it impacted me. It was years ago. He raised up his hand. He was weeping because he missed his mother, but he said, to God be the glory. He said, all things will work together for good. And he brought comfort to all of us there and to the family. It impacted my life. It's still impacting me today. And, and he was there. He was saying stuff like, Lord, I thank you for the years that I did have with my mother. Lord, I'm thankful for the time that I did have. It impacted all of us that day. He was talking loud there at the, at the front. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, that when you choose to be thankful, you get a perspective like this Bible, verse 2. And the Bible verse says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Well, maybe what we're going through doesn't seem light to us. But the Bible says there'll come a time you can look back and say, you know, in the big, long journey of life, that was tough. But guess what? I became better through it. I became stronger through it. I became closer to God through it. So, first of all, the Bible's saying that when we choose a thankful attitude, the three important things that always happen to us, number one, it helps to refocus your perspective. But then secondly, the Bible says it refreshes your heart when you choose to say, Lord, I'm not going to praise you for the, for the sad news we just received. Lord, I, I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, thank God I got in a car accident or thank God the job was lost or this. No, I, I, I'm saying I'm thanking God that he's the God who won't leave me or forsake me. And I thank God that he's the one who's going to walk through this with me. He's going to get me to the other side of this. And when we begin to think that way and talk that way, Psalm 95, verse 1 and 2 says this. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with Psalms. In other words, when you choose to say, Lord, I don't thank you for the loss. I don't thank you for the suffering. I don't thank you, Lord, that, hey, maybe uh, the car is totaled or now I don't have a way to get to work. I don't thank you for that. I thank you you're getting me through this. I thank you, God, you've always gotten me through it. You've always made a way. You're going to make a way through this. I'm coming out better than when I went in. And when you hear you yourself begin to choose that kind of attitude it begins to refresh your heart it's like you counseling you it's like you working on you it's like you getting a free therapy session with you because sometimes there's nobody that can help you like you man i'm only preaching for myself the times i've had to talk to myself out of the pit talk myself out of discouragement talk myself out of frustration but i'm here to tell you it works the bible said david encouraged himself in the lord can i hear a praise god from somebody right now when you choose thankfulness it will refresh your heart and then number three Oh, when you choose to develop a thankful attitude, number three, it reminds you, which we need this, I, I'll speak for me, which reminds me of God's goodness. Jesus, forgive me for every time I ever complained when I was thinking about what I wish I had and I wasn't even seeing what I had. And what I had was maybe something that a lot of folks maybe didn't have at that time. 
And so, praise God, are you, I'm, listen, I'm feeling this. I'm preaching to me right now. When I choose to be thankful, it reminds me of the goodness of God. Psalm chapter 7, verse 17 says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Most High God. It's like, okay, this happened, but guess what? I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to praise him Anyway, I'm going to praise him because he's the God who got me through that and he's the God getting me through this. And guess what? Here's how much I believe in God. I'm even going to praise him because he's going to get me through what's next in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody praise the Lord with me. I will praise the Lord. Psalm 100, verse number 5. I mean that somebody's getting a blessing from the Bible right now. Oh, I want you to say it with me out loud. Come on, let's read it together. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Friend, when the devil's been working on you, quote that three or four times. The Lord is good. Yes, his mercy is everlasting, but remember this. His mercy endures to all generations. The same God who helped your mother and father is going to help you. And the same God who helped their mother and father is going to help you. And the same God that helped your mother's mother's mother help them is going to help you you because his truth endures to all generations devil you're not going to get anything out of my mouth but thankfulness god is good all the time and then i want to share with you three principles in closing here three principles to help you and me possess a thankful attitude when i was studying this it really helped me out three things that will help me have a thankful attitude number one Make thankfulness, make thankfulness an all-day attitude. And I'll explain it. I discovered an all-day system for me. Every time I'm tempted, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, I'm tempted to kind of go left and like, like, you know, this isn't good. I'm letting something get to me. I'm not being cognizant of the blessings that I do have. When I say, I'm going to do it all day, I set a goal. And then I start getting on myself, saying, oh, now, you did good in the morning. Had a good, you blazed in the morning. You stayed thankful. Even though you had like five things come up that you didn't want to come up, and of course, they're going to stop you from other plans that you had, things you needed to get done. No, I said, uh-uh, I'm not going there because that's another word called frustration. And frustration does not help creativity. Frustration can sometimes hijack your creativity. So I've learned to say stuff like, well, didn't take God by surprise. So, you know what, I'm going to go with the flow. And you know what happened a few times to me? That when those unexpe unexpected distractions and challenges came up, I made new connections through that. I made some new friends. I, some good came out of it, so I've learned to say, okay, all day, all day, all day. Now, I got through the morning. Now it's the midday. I'm going to have an all-day attitude of thankfulness. I'm going to do it at night. Maybe, you know, this didn't work out, or I had plans, and that didn't work out. But I'm going to praise God that he's the God of my salvation. He's good all the time. Hallelujah. Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the Most High God. Now, let's put a time frame on it like I was doing. To show, it is a good thing. Next verse. Next verse. To show forth thy loving kindness, watch this, in the morning and every night. So in other words, afternoon and in there, but I'm saying morning, afternoon, and night. I'm on a pass to hair, keep your attitude right program. And I don't hit it all the time, but I'm going to work harder and I'm going to do better because the more thankful I am, the more blessed I am. The more thankful I am, the more my mind works better. The more thankful I am, the better my food digests. The more thankful I am, I don't see everything that's wrong all the time. I start seeing the blessings. I start seeing the, the things that are good. And before you know it, I'm having myself my own personal praise service because I'm saying, God, you've been 
so good to me. And you know what I believe happens? No wonder I feel better because, at least of this one thing, the devil gets out of my space because he can't find place. The Bible said don't give place to the devil. And the devil is always looking for an address for somebody that's whining and complaining. But you get to praising God, he'll go next door. He'll go down the street. He'll go to another complaining church member because he can't stand the atmosphere of praise, Brother Dana. I feel a shout right now. He can't stand the atmosphere of praise and worship because the devil's got a real problem. He got fired by God a long time ago. He's an ex-employee of heaven, and guess what? He knows his future is not good. So he's miserable. He wants to make me miserable, but I'm not going to entertain him. I want to give God praise. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord with me right now. Here's another principle that will help you possess a thankful attitude, and here it is. Here it is. Make an inventory of why you should be thankful. Now, I'm not telling you that you got to write everything down, but, you know, maybe it's really been rough. It might be a good idea. I've done this. It's gotten so intense in my life at different seasons where I wrote down things. You know, my father used to do that a lot. And he'd say, son, I remember one time he, he told me about a season he went through and he said, I got a tablet. And he said, son, I started writing down all the positive things that were going on in my life. And I'll never forget dad saying this to me. He said, and he preached it a lot in his sermons. He said, by the time I got done the list, and then I read it out loud. He said, I was hollering, I was shouting, I was praising God. So he said, son, life goes that way. He said, do what I learned to do. Focus on those blessings. Write them down. Even if you got to walk around with a piece of paper in your hand and start saying, I want to thank the Lord. He got me out of bed this morning. I want to thank God I have food in the kitchen to eat. I want to thank God I had a place to lay my head. I want to thank God that I'm not all locked up and messed up. I'm not a drug addict. I just want to thank God the day you start walking around reading that kind of stuff that you wrote before you know it. You'll put on a praise song or you'll turn on reach gospel radio and you'll start having a church service guess what the devil will say i can't stay here i got to get out oh hallelujah psalm 103 verse 1 and 2 bless the lord on my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse number two bless the lord on my soul and forget not all his benefits don't forget them write them down put them in your phone and start praising God and see what the Lord will do. And the final thing I want to share, the three principles to help you possess a thankful attitude, our final principle is make God the source of your thankfulness. Why is it some folks can only be happy if this happens or that, that break comes through? Or that dream they've had come in. I, I'm for all of it. I hope it happens in your life. But you know what? Anybody can be happy when you got what you wanted. But there's going to be some times in your life where you pray and you don't get an answer. Well, maybe you do. I heard an old preacher said there's always an answer when you pray, and he did it like this. Yep, I like it. He said, God has three answers. Yes, no, and wait. I think that covers all of it. Yes, no, or wait. And so whatever answer the Lord gives, let your thankfulness be him. God, I want to thank you. Your bread on the table, health in the body, healing in the body, provision. You're everything. You're a friend that sticks closer than the brother. I give you praise. Lord, I want to thank you that through this, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I have learned to depend like Andre Crouch said, I have learned to depend on your word. So, devil, go on, bring it on. But through it all, I'm going to trust in Jesus. The Bible study was this, the blessings of choosing a thankful attitude. When you choose to develop a thankful attitude, three important things always happen to you. Number one, it helps to refocus your perspective. Number two, it refreshes your heart. Number three, it reminds you of God's goodness. And then the three principles to help you possess a thankful attitude from the Bible. Number one, 
Make thankfulness an all-day attitude. Take it a day part at a time. Number two, make an inventory of why you should be thankful. Keep that thankfulness somewhere on your phone. Write it in your handwriting. Keep it on a tablet. Do what you got to do. And number three, make God the source of your thankfulness. I'll never forget, and I close with this. I happened to turn on the television, and it was a special on the human heart, the physical aspect of the human heart. They interviewed a world-renowned heart surgeon who had performed well over five to 600 open-heart surgeries, and he was pronounced one of the most amazing open-heart surgeons on planet Earth. They were asking him about the human heart and all of these different things and his experience. He said, one thing I've learned, though, I never heard this before, never heard it again. He said, one thing I've learned in the work that I do, he said, a grateful heart is a thankful heart. And he said, a thankful and a grateful heart equals a healthy heart. Yes, Lord. Thank you for helping my mind on that. He said, I've opened up a lot of people in surgery, hundreds of them, to do the valves. I've done transplants, he said. I've done it all. They call for me around the world. But he said, I've learned in this life that a thankful heart is always, to some level, a healthier heart. So he said, those of you watching me right now, work on your thankfulness. I'm thinking, this guy is a surgeon, and he's given a sermon on thankfulness. You know what? I took his advice because I really believe it. I believe the more thankful you are, the less stress on your heart. Let's you and me together. Let's work on this thing, huh? What do you say? Let's work on being more thankful. Let's be more thankful for the people in our lives. Let's be more thankful for the things that other folks only dream about that we have every day. There are people that would only dream of having their own transportation. We got it. People would dream like, you know, this is where I live. I got a place I call home. People would dream of that. We're blessed. But the biggest reason we're blessed is because we got Jesus. Hallelujah. We got the Lord. We are saved. Hallelujah. We know the gospel message. Thanks so much for being a part of the virtual Bible study. From the bottom of all of our hearts here, it takes a team to bring this to you. I want to say thank you. We love you. And now let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this wonderful time of praise, prayer, and word. We're grateful. Yeah, we're grateful, Lord, that we can do this. We can be together. And that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And now, Lord, I bless all that are watching and listening. That, Lord, we will elevate and accelerate our thankfulness concerning all things in Jesus' name. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, and amen. And never forget, we are thankful for you. God bless you.